Good morning, happy Sunday, and welcome to church. What's up, Bayside? <laughs> Good morning. We are so happy to be here with you. We are streaming live from the Lakewood Ranch campus. Good morning and hello. We want to know where you're watching from. So go ahead and comment below. Make sure to share this service because your friends and your family are not going to want to miss what God has for them. That's right. If y'all didn't, if y'all missed it, today is Sunday. And that's why you're logged in. And we're just it's probably one of our favorite times of the week, especially when we're hosting online. Yeah. Because we get to be with our online family and just say what's up. And yeah. so that's what it's all about. But hey, I'm Josh. I'm Jess. We're the six. And today is another installment in the series, Ancient Kings, and it continues. Last week was so good. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, you should go back onto YouTube and watch it. It was incredible. Pastor Randy brought it. But he's going to bring it again today with King Uzziah. Hello. Double Z, yo. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to hear it, but definitely share the service so that way your friends and your family, the people that we don't even know that follow you, can hop on to watch church with you. That's right. Yeah. I mean, this whole series, Ancient Kings, the whole series has been good. It started off with Pastor Bernard preaching about King David last week. Pastor Randy preached on King Saul this week, King Uzziah. I'm going to say Uzziah as many times Get as it. I can, all right, just because... I feel like it's a hard word to say. It's a very hard word. Anytime I see a double Z, I, I don't know. I don't even attempt it. Zion. <laughs> well, we also have Kids Camp coming oh up. God. So June 10th through 13th, get your kids signed up. Kids Camp is like the best time of the year. I know. Right? Uh, for parents and their children. <laughs> like parents all around. Collect <laughs> yes. <laughs> Collectively, it's a great time of the year. So June 10th through 13th, get online, mybayside.church slash probably Kids Camp. Or just mybayside.church, and then there'll be a hot link It'll be great. for Kids right. Camp. And that's the same way that you can find information about our 12 conference is by going online, and you'll get all the details there. It's July 29th to 31st, and that is for our youth. And so it's going to be an awesome event. It's actually going to be at the Yingling Center. And so that's just because we're growing. We're busting at the seams, and so we wanted to make your kids comfortable. And so we rented out that stadium and that's where that arena i should say and that's where it's gonna be it's gonna be so cool so if you have a middle schooler or high schooler sign them up for 12 conference i tr like just trust me yeah. they will walk into this semester the fall semester of school on for jesus telling all their friends who they everybody they know the gospel yeah. so so good i love i love like any conference like kids camp <laughs> and the conference like happening all in the same like <laughs> time your kids are just gonna be like bouncing off the walls we got the dark shepherd here What's up? how are you i just saw y'all standing here so i thought i would just come and say josh almost matched you today yeah. literally was wearing the same I, I thing pulled the jacket off right before coming well, that would have looked great because <laughs> i can't compete with the you, chain right? the chain and everything look at you guys he's got we'll it tucked in he's got we'll it tucked in just don't like the okay. chain I love the chain. Okay. Oh, that's it. Just like that. Pull Listen, out the chain. this is high school days right here. Man. Right here. This is how it works, right? You just got to bring it back. That's all. You got to bring it back. You guys do a great job. We love you guys. Enjoy the service. There it is. Thanks for stopping Y'all heard it first. Enjoy the service. I'm going to put the chain back. Okay, I feel yeah, like it's too. <laughs> we also have a regional hangout. This is for you, our church online family. So there are people in your region that you can hang out with. <laughs> And we want to make it super easy for you to connect with those people that are in your area. So sign up for this regional hangout. It's going to be a Zoom where you can all come together and meet one another. And maybe, hey, you'll make a lifelong friend yeah. in the process. So I this is, love this yeah. idea of regional hangouts because what that is proving is that we're having community outside of the Florida area. And so we want to bring that community to you. And we've identified that there are people watching in your area. And so what better way to introduce your church folk? And that's what it's about. And so just sign up because you want to get all the details there. Next week they'll have all the details. But it's going to be a great opportunity to just find your fellow friend. Church folk. You've hey, never church folk, said yo. that before. Well, I want to say hello to some people. We got Gwen, Courtney, and Angela on Church Online. And then we have Linda on Facebook. Good morning. Where are my YouTubers at? I Let's need you go. to comment below and say hello. And if you guys need any prayer or anything at all, any thing that you want to share uh, testimony-wise, we right. want to celebrate with you. We want to pray with you. So comment below right now. Yes. We got Grumpy, Mike, and Merrill. Hello, guys. That's so good. I love it. Hey, I know before we were talking, we were talking about the new Stanley Fanny Pack. Oh, my gosh. And I want to get you guys' take on this yeah. to see Hot take. Hot take. if it's going to be rocked. 
I don't know. So let me give you guys the idea of what I saw. I don't even, it's got to be out because it was on Stanley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's basically a fanny pack for your Stanley. So you cross body it and your Stanley fits. But your wallet and your phone and your keys yeah. all have hooks and pockets which, for it. Which is like, I get it. Like, it's a girl's dream come true. Because not only are you not lugging around this big Stanley, but you need to have your hands free because it's like a crossbody. But it's like legit a wallet on your Stanley. Like, because yeah. you need your phone, you need a lip gloss or a chapstick. You need other things that are just like your license. It's all there. It all fits in your Stanley now. I think it's genius. I just don't know if I, I, I don't know. I have two questions for it. What? One, is my back going to fall out because the Stanley's heavy? <laughs> Two, am I going to get dripped on by the water of the Stanley? Because I'll just walk normally and my whole sleeve is wet. Yeah. So. If you don't know what we're talking about, just look online, Stanley.com, <laughs> and check out these cups. It's just, it's a viral cup that everyone loves. It has a handle. It's just, it's the best. But there, it's now so large that it now needs a, no. like a... A purse for it. It's a cool invention because <laughs> I feel it like it's it's your hand. You're getting your hands back. Right, right. By it, but that's, yeah, that's the whole point. I just don't know if I will do it. Yeah, I don't think you should. I should. I definitely I honestly, don't. Now think you I should. feel like I should. I think you need to rick it in. I'm gonna do it, it while worshiping hands in the Stanley, and then I'm getting a drink <laughs> while I worship. It's I'm like the done. new Camelback. Yeah, that's what it is. It, yeah. There it is. But you're not doing anything athletic while you have it because it's gonna just flop I around could. and hit your side. Can you imagine me at the gym on a <laughs> treadmill. <laughs> The Done. <laughs> Chrissy, Pena, just hello. Lynn and Jackie, Stop. save me from this conversation. <laughs> We're talking Comment about Stanley. Comment below if you okay. would get the Stanley Fanny. Let's, and it's not called the Stanley Fanny. That's what I'm calling I, it. I think it's genius. Yeah. Let's pray. Stanley, hire me. Got Let's pray. Seconds. All right. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We just pray for the Stanley folks and that <laughs> they just have great inventions. But Father, I just thank you for everyone that's watching. And I pray a special blessing over them right now. Lord, you know the what they're seeking you. And Lord, I pray that they'll find it this morning. I pray that as we continue this series, that it's going to speak to us in a new way, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you have. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a great service. We'll see you next week. Love you guys.
I kind of like that part. Uh oh oh. and just smile at them. Turn to the other person, just smile at them. There you go. Let's give it up for all of our first time guests. So glad that you're here today. My name is Bernard and uh, I have the privilege of serving on the team here as the campus pastor. And what a privilege it is to have you worshiping with us. And if you're a guest, we would love to help you get connected. Find out a little bit more about us as, as well as us get to know a little bit about you. There's a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you, but uh, there's a more even more convenient way. There is an NFC chip on the back of the seat, top left corner. Take your phone, tap the top of your phone on there. It will take you to a brief form and all the information about Bayside Community Church. If you want to try that now, you can just pull it out, tap it, just tap your phone, just tap your phone, and it'll help you get connected, all right? And then if you came prepared to worship God and you're giving, several ways that you can do that, that's gonna be on the screen. And remember, through your generosity, we're able to make a difference right here in our community, as well as around the world and uh, in our next generation. And I'm thankful for what God is doing. And one of the things I, I, I wanna share with you real quickly is, and say this when they say, it's time. Okay, it's time. You say, well, what is it time for? It's time to engage with what God is doing. It's time to serve. It's time to partner with God and do something amazing uh, because we're in a time and a season where I believe the soon return of Christ is, is, is imminent. I do believe that. Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. And I refuse to be moved by what the world is doing because I'm focusing on what God is doing. And I believe that each and every one of us has been wired, gifted. And when you come to church here, uh, it's easy to come and it's nice. Seats, it's clean. Bathrooms, clean. Thank God for facilities team, right? Uh, parking lot is in order, organized. You dropped off your kids and our, our kids crew team is doing an amazing job. Hospitality, shaking your hand and, and coffee. You got your coffee when you came in. I mean, come on. This, and you know what that does? That creates an environment for people to encounter Christ. And he's making a difference. And then there's seen and unseen areas where you can partner with God and serve. You can become a dream teamer here. You can, it, there's plenty to do. We live in a, in a community that's continually growing and there's people that are coming and coming. And I need you. We need you. It's time to come on and get engaged and say, you know what, what can I do? What can, what can I do? We, we got guests that are coming. What can I do to help serve God? What can I do to help serve the house to get ready for the harvest that's coming? There's seen positions and there's unseen. There's plenty of unseen. In fact, Bayside Productions is one of those unseen things that if it wasn't for them, you know, we, all of this would be silent. They're, they're in the back room right now making it happen every week, every week. Every week, Bayside Productions to make it happen. If you like gadgets, computers, cameras, all that stuff, come on, it's time, it's time. Come on, come make it happen. You know what I love with Bayside Productions? One of the things that they're helping us do, when you serve, 
You are literally, this service is being broadcast around the world. And thousands of people get to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, get to get connected with God. People, when you serve, you have no idea what credit you're going to get when you get to heaven. God say, oh yeah, remember that service when you served behind the camera? You thought you were just doing something that didn't mean a lot. But this many people got to hear the gospel and this many people got saved. It's time. Everybody say, it's time. So I want you to do this. What I want you to do. When you leave here today, now there's two things you can do. You can tap the, your phone. You can tap your phone. Or you can stop by the Connect Center and see one of our team members in the blue shirts and say, all right, I'm ready. What, where, where do I sign up? And let's make a difference in our world, all right? Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're doing in our midst. And we pray for a couple area churches today. We pray for St. John United Methodist Church. We pray over their staff, peace over their congregation. We also pray for Westside Christian Church, that you would continue to touch hearts in their community. And as we continue our service, we declare as always Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Let's look up and say it together. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, does that work within us? To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's continue to worship.
that line in there that says while you were going through the suffering and while you were going through excruciating pain Savior that you would think of me that's a word for us today church that while we're going through think about others think about him think about what he went through even when he was on the cross speaking to those that were to his right and to his left he was thinking of them so today he's speaking of you so that's why we can sing how marvelous how marvelous how wonderful how precious is the blood how precious is the blood, it washes me, what a miracle, how precious is 
Father, we love you, and we thank you for making a way for us. We worship you, and we love you. It's in your precious name that we pray, Jesus. And all of God's people said amen, and amen. Come on, the presence of the Lord is here, yeah? The presence of the Lord is here. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Won't you take a few moments and greet somebody, and then we can get ready for the word of God. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I was wondering if you guys were just going to stare at me or you're going to say something first. So. But it's great to have you guys join us. Come on, let's welcome the rest of our family online and our other locations. Yeah, good to have you guys joining us. Yeah. So uh, we are in the middle of a series called Ancient Kings. Maybe you're new with us today and we say a series. What does that mean? We uh, sometimes will take a particular topic or a theme and we'll run it for several weeks and teach different aspects of that. We're in a series called Ancient Kings where we're going into the Old Testament and we're looking at the kings that led the nation of Israel to see what kind of uh, lessons we can learn from them. And today, we're gonna be studying uh, a man named Uzziah. Everybody say Uzziah. I would love for you to turn in your Bibles to Second Chronicles chapter 26. Uh, or as I like to say, you could also click in your Bible using your smart device, the Second Chronicles chapter 26. Uh, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be teaching uh, a lot from this one particular chapter. In fact, there's uh, several verses that we're going to dig into, and that's, that's what we, we do here. Uh, if you're new, we're a Bible-based church, and so we study the Word, we believe in the Word. It is the only uh, authority in our lives, and so... Uh, yeah, people are clapping, and I think it's important. I think it's important to understand that the Bible is truth. And people try to uh, discredit it all the time and saying that it's flawed and there's uh, discrepancies uh, in, in there. I'm just here to tell you it's true. And, uh, and you have to have a true north in life. Otherwise, you make decisions based on emotions or what culture says or what a friend says. And, and just around here, we just take the word of God as truth and we live our lives according to that. And so uh, maybe you don't buy that. Maybe you don't believe that. Maybe you just think it's a good book. That's okay. You're welcome. But I just want you to know who we are 
and, and what we believe around here. And I think truth is so hard to find. Uh, but I can tell you, you found truth if you're here today and you're looking for truth. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so let me set up what we're uh, talking about today in Uzziah. First of all, this is a time when Israel was in a very, very volatile time. Uh, the nation of Israel was split into two kingdoms. There was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. Israel was the northern. Judah was the southern uh, kingdom. It was, it was divided. There, were, there was lots of volatility and things weren't going well. And Amaziah was the king of the nation of Israel. And he had a son named Uzziah. And Amaziah, you know, maybe he loved the Lord, but he was not a great king. And, uh, and so because of that, Jerusalem and lots of, of towns in the area of Israel were completely, you know, destroyed and, dis and in despair. And Amaziah actually went into hiding and made his son king while he was actually still alive because he is doing such a bad job. His enemies were over uh, taking him, and so he went into hiding, and Uzziah, his son, became king. So here we are in Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 3 through 5. It says, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. I don't know about you, but I don't see many 16-year-olds around here that I go, they'd make a great king, right? <laughs> uh, and he reigned in Jerusalem. He reigned 52 years. Okay, his mother... Her name was Jacola, and uh, if you were to say that, it'd be oh, I mean, you got the Hebrew way. I'm not even going to try it. I'm from Louisiana, okay? So she was actually from Jerusalem. And Uzziah, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. Let me just stop for a moment, because a lot of people... Uh, are afraid of God. And, you know, maybe, maybe like where I grew up in, my pastor I grew up when I was young just told me I was going to hell every weekend. I was scared to death of hell. How I many of y'all, you know, you don't want to go there? Raise your hand if you don't want to go to hell. Look, r please raise your hand because <laughs> I don't know why you're here if you don't mind going to hell. But... <laughs> Amy, you'd be so proud of me. I have so many things running through my head, and I'm not saying <laughs> one of them. Like I'm getting mature in my old age here. Okay. The fear of God is not like, oh, I'm afraid of God. The fear of God is the awe of God, the wonder of God. Like, oh, how, how amazing is our God? That's, that's what he had here. He had, he had a, a man of God. Zechariah was his name. Uh, he's, he's not the Zechariah was, a, you know, became a, a king, right? This is a different guy, but he was a man of God. And, uh, and he instructed him, instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he, Uzziah, sought the Lord, God gave him success. Would you close your eyes? Would you open your heart for a moment? God, thank you for your word. Um, God, it is truth. And so that means today we're, we're, we're already speaking about truth. But what we need is we need hearts to like comprehend it. Like give us hearts to receive your word today. God, help us to lean in today. Help us to learn from Uzziah that we might seek you. And when we do, God, success and progress, it all is it's from you. It's from your hands. So may we live in awe and wonder in the fear of God today so that our lives can be completely changed. May we reflect you in everything we do. In Jesus' name, everybody said no, but seriously, he was 16 years old, right? I was thinking, well, what happened when I turned 16 years old? I never forget when I turned 16 years old. Uh, I, I got my driver's license at 16 years old. We showed up that day on my birthday, July 12th. Write that down. <laughs> July 12th. And, and I, I got my, went and got my test and got my license that day. And we literally had the car already packed as myself, my mom, my brother, and I can't remember who else it was. And we got in the car and we drove to Colorado uh, straight, like it's like a 17 hour drive or something. And we drove straight and I was one of the drivers as well. And we made it safely. <laughs> so we left Louisiana in the July. I had shorts, t-shirt, flip flops on, and we got to Pikes Peak. And we got out and I played in the snow on July 13th, the day after my birthday, with flip-flops on, with shorts. In. First time I had seen snow. 
That's what I was doing when I was 16 years old. Uzziah became a dog, <laughs> not a D-O-G. It's the young people teach you, dog is D-A-W-G. That means you like, you got it going on. Okay. <laughs> Here's what you need to understand is that you're never too young to do great things for God. And so uh, if you're a young person in here, what's this, a relative term? Because I look at 40-year-olds and I go, hey, you're young. Okay, but, so, but, but you need to understand something. If you're what we call the next generation, let me just tell you something. You're never too young to do great things for God. And so maybe you feel, yeah, come on, let's give these young people a hand because they need encouragement. This is a place for around here an environment that you're gonna develop and grow and do great things for God. In fact, we need you. This church needs you. Uh, I love walking around with our college students and our young people and I see them in the foyer and I go, man, I'm so glad you're a part of this. And I go, you see all of this? And they go, yeah. I said, well, this is gonna be yours one day. So I need you to rise up. I need somebody to hand it off to. We, we need the next generation, amen? amen? And so he was seeking the Lord and as long as he did, God gave him Success. So I, I want to look at the rise of Uzziah because it says that he became king and he sought God and God gave him success. Uh, let's look at the rise, the success that God gave Uzziah. Uh, first, uh, we're still in Second Chronicles, verses six through eight. So he he went to war against the Philistines and he broke down the walls of Gath and Yabna and Ashdod and then he rebuilt the ter- towns near Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. And God helped him even against the Philistines and against the Arabs in it, who lived in Gerbal and against the, I would call these the Meunites. They were very narcissistic people. I, I didn't know that would go over very well and it, it didn't. The Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah and his fame Uh, spread as far as the border of Egypt because he had become very powerful. Okay, so here you see God blessing Uzziah, and I would put it in this area, it was his rise over his enemies, over his enemies. Because you see, it said there that, you know, God gave him uh, success in war against the Philistines. Well, this had been an enemy for years. You remember David had been in Goliath, right? Goliath was a Philistine, right? And so that was some 200 years before this. And here they still are fighting this enemy called the Philistines. And it says that it was in those areas of the Philistines and all of these enemies that he actually tore down the walls of these particular things. I want you to understand something. When you and I seek God and we make sure that we put him first in our lives, the walls, and that word wall is the Hebrew word mas, which actually means a dividing or a separating or isolating thing. God doesn't want you to be isolated and separated and divided from him. But when you seek him, he will tear those things down so that the presence of God can help you in those things that kind of separate you and isolate you. It's so cool as we study this. So I want you to notice that first was the wall of Goth, which means wine press. And and I would liken this to the areas in our lives where we have vices, things that have strongholds in our lives that these things, there's a vice in your life. There's an area where you're most susceptible. In fact, Hebrews chapter 12 talks about how there's a sin that easily trips you up. You guys, you know what that is. You know it. And so a lot of times you think other people don't know it, but let me just tell you something, people know. Isn't it funny how you think you're hiding stuff from people, but they really see it, right? And so the devil's plan is to build a wall, to isolate you in those areas. You you get off, you think you're all by yourself or you think it's okay and nobody really knows. But when we seek God, he tears that down and we're no longer isolated. He will set you free from your vices, from the sins that so easily entangle you. Come on, y'all can give God praise for that. That's right, yeah. In the wall of Yabna, this right here is the Hebrew word for false worship. And uh, I liken that to us today. I mean, how, how does this relate to us here in America? We have, we have things that we worship that are, not true, that that are not the things that we should be worshiping. And and by the way, worship just simply means giving something worth, okay? Like this is so valuable, I'm gonna worship this, I'm gonna give this more worth than God. 
Uh, I think in America, we think that accomplishments will bring fulfillment in our lives. And oftentimes, we can find ourselves chasing after things, and once we have them, that it's like, oh, so then we have to climb something else. It's, years ago, I heard somebody say, you know, climbing the ladder of success is great, except you get to the top and you realize that it's leaning against the wrong wall. <laughs> You think that's going to be the thing that's going to bring you fulfillment. I, I did some research uh, looking at the state of Americans' hearts when it comes to uh, success and financial uh, success. And most Americans are, um, what's the word? They're discontent. They're afraid, like inflation and all of these things. And we're worried about the dollar and worried about the future. And there's all this stuff going on. And we feel like a financial collapse is about to happen. And so there was this research that was done asking Americans, well, how much do you need to make to feel secure so that this inflation and all these things will help you? And it was so interesting because it didn't matter where you ask people. If they fell in the category where they're making 50 grand a year or they're making 100 grand a year or $200,000 a year, in, in every category, all of them said, I need to be making twice as much as what I'm saying right now. What that means is this, Proverbs chapter 27 and 20, it says, human desires are like the world of the dead. There's always room for more. Because it doesn't matter where you are, what you need is just a little bit more. And that's false worship. And, and God, when we seek him, he tears that down and he leads us to a place in Psalm 34 where it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who trust or take refuge in him. Look, church, yeah, y'all can give him some praise. Let me just tell you, when you just choose like Uzziah did, I'm going to seek the Lord. And as I seek him, Jesus even said, seek the kingdom of God first, and then he'll add things to your life, whatever you need. Not your wants, but your needs. And there's joy in that. Well, I'm not chasing something, I'm chasing him. And, and I'm just telling you, there's, there's a fulfillment in that. Uzziah can teach us, it's not about chasing things, but it's about destroying those walls that isolate us from God. And we do that by seeking him first. All right, how about the wall of Ashdod? That's the Hebrew word for powerful or pride. Um. We talked a lot about this last week, about pride. In fact, we're going to be talking about it a little bit more later. So if this keeps coming up, maybe you need it. Yeah, I don't have that moneymaker, Pastor Bernard, like you do. So <laughs> I don't know. I just, I feel like my pastor, uh, Larry Stockstill, his father, Roy Stockstill, started the church I grew up in. And, uh, and he said this years ago, and he, it, it was, was kind of one of his famous statements. He said, a person that is on their face before the Lord, they can't fall from that position. My, my goodness. You know, if we will just live with our idea of seeking God first and just remaining, Lord, look, God, I don't need anything. I don't need anything but you. And if I have that and I taste and see that you're good and I just live on my face like submitted unto you, then nothing else brings satisfaction. It's, it's hard to have pride when you're like, God, I don't care. Whatever you give me is good enough and I'm just going to live with that. And uh, in, in fact, Jesus even said that whoever exalts themselves will be humbled and whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. It's it, the dichotomy of the kingdom of God. It is it's counterintuitive to you and I. We're always fighting for ourselves. And if we just surrender ourselves, then God takes care of us. And it's counterintuitive, but I'm, it's the way of God. And so, praise the Lord. I like this too, this part. It says that, that the Ammonites, another enemy, uh, brought them tribute. You're not just having victory over your enemies. They're actually bringing tribute to you. I, I love this proverb. It says, when people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with him. Do you know the people that if you could just... 
the, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. The people that you know at your job or whatever, they're out to get you. And if they ever do something wrong and you could catch them, you're going to report it so they can get fired. Those people. Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? The person that's a competitor in your business that's always lying and cheating and manipulating things. And you're like, man, if I ever catch him doing something, I'm reporting it to the board and I'm going to get him fired. <laughs> if you just seek God, he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. He does that. Is that so hard to do? For sure. I know you guys think I'm a professional Christian, so everything's great for me. I just read coffee and drink, the, you know, read the Bible and drink coffee all the time and kind of, you know, sit around and kumbaya. No, you don't understand. I have to deal with this too. You wouldn't believe the stuff that people say. I had a guy just recently who was so mad at me and all the letters, like I had to have our security team keep an eye out for him because I thought he was going to get me. And I wanted to, just like, I hope I do see him. He <laughs> don't know. I might be saved, but I ain't all the way sanctified. (laughs) I actually kind of was hoping I'd see him, honestly. I was like, I hope we run into each other in the foyer. He never came. I ended up getting a letter from him. Well, we found another church, and we're leaving. And then he sent a check to Kingdom Builders. (laughs) Only the Lord could do that. So you just going to have to trust God with those things. I don't know how it works. It's the Lord, okay? So he's bigger than this Cajun brain. He's probably bigger than yours too. Thank God we serve a God that's bigger than here. Amen? It doesn't make sense. That's how he operates. So over his enemies, there was also a rise uh, of his home, his own, his own personal life. Because it says in the next few verses that Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. I remember, that's where his mother was from. That's where the king lived. You know, uh, David, you know, even built a palace there. So that, that's his home. And, uh, and then he built these towers at the corner gate, at the valley gate, at the angle of the wall. He fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness, and he dug many cisterns, wells, because he had much livestock in the foothills and the plain. Okay, this word built towers means elevated. God elevated things in his life, and uh, he tore down the walls, and then he elevated some other things. What did he elevate? I want you to notice these things. The corner gate, that's the first thing. And uh, this is kind of the, uh, on the western wall in Jerusalem, the furthest point from the tabernacle even, the, the, the corner gate. Way out there. Here's what I want you to know. When you and I choose to seek God, the things that are kind of at extremities in our life, God will even elevate those things. Things that you don't even have to give attention to, just all of a sudden you're like, wow, how did that happen? God's elevating things that are even far from you. It's it's like the prayer of Jabez, God, enlarge the territory of my tents. God will stretch out your tent cords, Isaiah says, and he'll, he'll even make the extremities of your life blessed. When you and I choose to seek him, that's the corner gate. Then we have a valley gate. The valley gate was like it sounds in the valley. Maybe there's some areas in your life I would liken this to despair or discouragement or or disappointment, that God wants to elevate those areas in your life where you have been so discouraged. The Lord put it on my heart that some of you right now are in such great despair that you are so discouraged, you are so ready to give up. You're like so deep in a valley that if you will just choose to start seeking God, then he will take that low area and he'll elevate it. How does he do that? Look at Psalm 30. You have turned my morning into joyful dancing. Wouldn't it be great? You think about the areas where you're most discouraged that all of a sudden you could be like, hey, yeah, right? Only God can turn, change the nature. That's what that word means. Actually, to change the nature or the makeup of something. When you're all gloomy and down, you can be full of joy so much that you're dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning, and God, you clothed me with joy. That I might sing praises to you, and I will not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. I like it says it in Isaiah. It says, God will provide for those who grieve in Zion. 
Look at this. He's gonna bestow, he's gonna give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. Some verses say, put on the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. You know what that means, church? Is you have to choose to put on praise. You go, well, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Well, you just put it on. You show up sometimes, you're like, oh, uh, I don't even want to be here. This came because I felt like I had to. Well, take off that garment of despair and put on the garment of praise and just choose to praise him anyway because that's where God takes your mourning and turns it into joyful dancing when we choose to praise anyway. Why don't you just start showing up early instead of late? It's not a warm-up to the good part. (laughs) Praise, worship is a moment for you to allow God to morph your difficulties into your victories. I've said this last week, and I just am calling you to a different walk with God. We are no longer going to live laissez-faire casual Christian life anymore. It's time for us, church, to rise up. It's time for us to say, I'm gonna overcome my despair by seeking God first. I'm gonna show up and praise, and I don't care who else does or who's not there. They messed up my coffee. I don't need coffee anyway. God, you're gonna be the joy of my life in Jesus' name. (laughs) And if you're sitting there going, I don't understand, just try it. I double dog dare you. Remember those days? Kids don't do that anymore. That's a big deal. Double dog daring you. Just just try it. Taste and see. I promise you, he's so good. There's no way to get out of your grief and your despair and your mourning except through praise. I don't know how he does it, but he builds towers. He elevates us in the moments of our valley when we choose to praise him. Amen. And then how about this? The angle wall or the angle of the wall. You know, I just, I I know that the devil looks for angles to get in. And he looks for weak areas in our lives to get in. He will take the smallest of cracks and he will try to get in there. Wouldn't it be cool if God could fortify those areas? (laughs) I actually thought about when Amy and I lived in Louisiana, we, uh, our neighbor built his house. And then when he finished building, he had a big pile of lumber in his backyard. And then he was cleaning all that out. And mice had, you know, a whole colony had, like decided to live in there. And those little things, they went everywhere. Well, they ran in our house. There was a place at the footer, there was a little angle for them to get in. So I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And when I did, something plopped in the toilet. And I was like, what in the world? So I went to the bathroom standing there. (laughs) I I turned on the light and there was a mouse. In the toilet, I flushed him. I mean, right? So, anyway, Amy freaked out. So when I turned the light on, there was a place through the cabinet. It was in our bathroom, you know, that they came in. There was a place in the in the, the bottom of the cabinet where they came out as well. Amy moved to the other side of the house. She took her stuff. She went over there. She said, until all those mice are gone, you won't see me over there. I'm not... Not going on that side of the house. They found a little angle. Well, I, you know, I, I, I tried to be, you know, nice about it and put them on a glue stick and they would get stuck. By the time I get my golf club and go in there, they were gone. But you know, they had no hair on this side of their body. <laughs> and, and I got those traps just, mm, got rid of all of them. But, and she moved back over there. Uh, that was so good. But they found this little, I mean, this little angle, and I had to fortify that area so they couldn't get in. And all I can tell you is that there are angles in your life that the devil wants to get in. And you and I, when we choose to seek God and put him first, as long as you seek God, he'll fortify the angles in your life where the devil will try to get in. He'll make you strong. He'll help you. And it's 
it's, it's the way to overcome it. So, amen. And then one other thing uh, when it comes to this fortifying is that they also built towers in the wilderness. And these are the dry areas. Maybe you have some areas in your life that are really dry right now and you feel like, golly, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel the presence of God. I don't feel the blessing of God. It's just, I'm just in a dry season right now. We've all been in those seasons before. I mean, uh, as many times I've been in those and I'm praying and I feel like, you know, God, where, hello, hello, hello. You know, where are you, you, you? I mean, like I'm out there all by myself. I know what that feels like, but just continue seeking God and he'll take those dry areas and, and it says they dug cisterns there which they found water there. Let me just tell you, the Holy Spirit is a pitcher of water. He, that's, that's what he is. And Jesus, when he came and lived on this earth, he said, I'm gonna leave and then I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit and he's the one that's gonna refresh your life and give you power to overcome the enemy. He, Jesus even used this word. He says, I, I'm gonna be, you're getting baptized in water now, but later you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that's the thing that's going to bring refreshing and encouragement in your life when you're in dry seasons. And, and what's interesting is that word baptism, anytime you read that, especially when it's referring to the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean a one-time thing. It's a continual flowing and filling and, and being immersed in the Holy Spirit. I, I just, if you don't hear anything else I say today, let me just tell you something. Without the Holy Spirit, your life is going to be dry. And God, you, you got to dig some areas in your life that are dry. You got to dig deep and say, Holy Spirit, I need you in my life to refresh me and to encourage me and to help me get through this dry season. And when somebody say, well, when were you filled with the Spirit? This morning. And tomorrow you wake up, they say, well, when were you filled with the Spirit? This morning. Even when you're dry. And it's in doing that saying, Holy Spirit, today... I need you. I'm facing all kind of things. The devil's going to try to get angles in my life. I'm in a valley. I'm in a dry spot. Holy Spirit, I need you today. And when we live our lives that way and we declare those things, then he will dig a cistern and the Holy Spirit will begin to flow out of us even the areas where we're dry. That's what Uzziah did. And that's what you and I need to learn as well. So one other area where there was a rise in his enemies, over his enemies, in his home, and there was a rise in his provisions. I mean, God blessed this guy so much that there was no way that, that anyone could have the wealth and the uh, positions and the provisions he had. Verses 12 through 15. So the total number of leaders over the fighting men was 2,600. And under their command was an army of 307,500 men trained for war a powerful force to support the king against his enemies. Uzziah provided them with shields and spears, and helmets and coats of armor, bows and sling stones and, um, and for the entire army. And then in Jerusalem, look at this guy. God gave him wisdom for inventions. He made devices invented to use uh, for use on the towers and the corner defenses so that soldiers would shoot arrows and hurl large stones from walls. This guy was brilliant. God gave him ideas on how to hedge himself so the devil couldn't take over his possessions in his land anymore. I'm here to tell you, God wants to give some inventions to people here. I think God is looking for people of, of God that seek him, that he can give all kinds of ideas, the next business idea, the way to grow your business, an invention and a cures perhaps for cancer or all kinds of things that are happening. That's what God is looking for. And it happens as long as we seek God. But here's the tragedy of the story in the very next verse. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. The problem with us is when things are going good, we tend to not seek God as well. You ever notice when you're in a difficult moment, you will make those prayers like, oh God, i do anything. How many of you ever prayed those foxhole prayers? you like, I don't care what it is, God. And then when things are going good, you like, you can kind of get complacent. Come on, somebody raise your hand. All of you raise your hand. And that's what led to his, his downfall, his pride, 
lifted himself up, kind of really forgetting where his help came from. So how can you and I avoid that fall? A couple of things I want to give you. We need to guard against self-reliance. Be careful that you don't forget where your blessings come from. Verse 16 continues and it says, so Uzziah was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. We started out when he became king at 16 years old. We started out with him, you know, seeking God and getting success. And now we're at a place where he's no longer seeking God and therefore pride, began. He, he forgot where his blessing came from. And I found something interesting in studying this. And it says that he sought the Lord. That, that word, Hebrew word for seeking, or we see it as salt, it literally means to trample under foot. To trample underfoot. What is this passage talking about? When you and I create a path to go seek God, that we do that so often that it, we're trampling that path to go see God under our feet, it actually wears the ground out and there actually is a path. You've seen that before, perhaps. I mean, we have one in our yard that our dogs, they go to the around a certain part of the house every day and it's kind of made a little path right there that's the way you and i need to be if there are any paths in our lives regularities in our life things that we do habitual it is that we are wearing the path and we're going to seek god even when you don't feel like it look this is my place right here where i love to come and seek god and i've worn a path from my house to this place and there are many times i get here and i'm just like this I don't feel anything. I don't feel like God is here, but I just keep wearing a path. I'm just gonna keep doing the right thing again, 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 and again, because if I don't, then I forget where my blessing comes from, and that's what leads to our downfall. It's, yeah. We simply have to make a decision to not be led by emotions, but led by principles. I'm going to do these things regardless of how I feel. That's the kind of level that God is calling us to, church, to no longer seeking God just to take care of me. I'm seeking God because it's the right thing to do, and I know if I don't, then that's going to be the demise of my life. And it says there that he, as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. As long as. That, that phrase really means to the same degree. Your life will be elevated to the same degree that your spiritual life is elevated. It says this in 3 John in the New Testament. It, the, the prayer is, I pray that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers, to the same degree as your soul prospers. I see people make decisions too many times that are more about the job opportunity they have and maybe they have to move or they have to, they're working on Sundays or things aren't the same anymore because they actually made a decision to put the prospering of their lives ahead of the prospering of their soul and that begins their demise and they're like, I don't understand why is God not blessing me anymore because you wore a a, a trail in your life seeking the wrong thing rather than seeking God. And when we build the path of seeking God, then the rest of our life will grow to that same level as we seek the Lord. That's what I'm calling us to, church. That's the, that's the path that we have to seek God in. So last thing I wanna share with you is that we have to beware of spiritual blindness. Um, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but you have blind spots. Areas that you're not able to see in your life. And, and like I said earlier, we, we think that we can hide things from other people, but they see it. But there's also things that they see that we can't see. And that's what happened to Uzziah, and it led to his downfall. Look in these verses. So then Uzziah entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar. And Azariah, the priest, with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord, followed him in. They confronted King Uzziah and they said, it's not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That's for the priest, the descendants of Aaron. You are who have been consecrated to burn incense. You need to leave the sanctuary for you have been unfaithful and you will not be honored by God. Uzziah, he had a censer in his hand and he was ready to burn incense. He became angry. And while he was raging at the priest in the presence before the altar, the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy broke out on his forehead. 
And the rest of his life, he lived in isolation with leprosy because he wouldn't listen to other people. Remember, we started out reading this that Zechariah instructed him in the fear of God, and now Zechariah is nowhere to be found, and neither is he listening to other spiritual influence. He's listening to the wrong thing. I'm just telling you, as your pastor, you need to make decisions with godly people in your life. The person at the water cooler at work asking them about finances and they're about to file bankruptcy is not the right place to get financial wisdom from. Someone whose marriage is in a mess is not the right person to ask how to have a healthy marriage. Do you understand? You have to have people in your life that you go, man, there's something about them that I need to learn from. And you need to seek after that wisdom. You need to listen to that spiritual advice so that you can receive the tools and the things necessary to accomplish all that God has in your life. Seeking God means having the right people in your life as well. And so many times we forget about that. We, we get caught up in what's happening right now in our lives and we don't have the right people around us. Which, by the way, you guys, I don't, I don't know what you think, but I, a lot of times I say, wouldn't it be great if you would get in community here and we have small groups and we have ways for you to do that and you go, oh yeah, you know, whatever. It's, it's not just some program that makes me happy if you're in a group. I just want you to be in relationship with other people of God. And you go, well, I don't want to go because my life's a mess. So is everybody else around here. (laughs) This church is loaded with some jacked up people. (laughs) And we get all pretty on the weekend and we show up like, hey, I said that last week. How you doing? Praise the Lord. God bless you. And we we got issues too. And and if you don't have those relationships, you're making decisions in a vacuum. You're you're living life in a vacuum and you're afraid to tell other people maybe because you're afraid of what's going on. It's time to get rid of your pride and realize I need some people in my life. And maybe you don't know where to start, but let me tell you where to start. Today, as soon as service is over, make your way down to the altar. We have prayer people and leaders that are trained to help you and give you wisdom. And I promise we'll walk this thing with you. And rather than us being like Uzziah one day, broken out with leprosy, meaning sin is broken out all over our lives and we live in isolation. Let's let the Lord break those walls down in our lives and let's live in all that he has for us, church, because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that God is calling us to more. Today is the day where we need to rise up about how we feel and we need to choose to seek God anyway. Okay, I've preached enough. Okay, so close your eyes for a moment. God, I just thank you for your people. I pray, God, that there's a hunger inside of them right now. I pray that there's a stirring. I I pray they're uncomfortable, God. That every one of us here that are listening to this message, whenever that is, that that we would be at a place right now where we're, we're tired of being complacent but we're ready to seek you, God, with all of our heart. We're ready to wear a path out to coming to you. So God, you can grant us success over marriages, over businesses, over grief, over relational tension and family division. In Jesus' name, I declare, God, that we would rise up above that. And God, that we are gonna seek you And God, you'd open up the windows of heaven and you would empower us with all that we need in Jesus' powerful, precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Randy. I'm gonna ask that you would just bow your heads for one more moment, please. And no moving, just honor this moment for a second. I wanna extend an invitation. And if you're here today, And you're ready to make a decision to allow Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. Uh, He died, rose again, paid for the penalty of your sin because we are all born into sin, which means we're separated from God. Jesus came to make a way for us to be reconnected with our Heavenly Father, our source. 
So we can spend eternity with him, but not also not only spend eternity with him, but have everything that we need here on earth as it pertains to life and to godliness so that we can be equipped to make it through this life. You don't have to do it alone. The spirit of God wants to walk with you. If you're ready to make a decision to say yes to Jesus and allow him to be your Lord and your Savior on the count of three, I want you to lift your hand. If you're watching online, you can make that indication right there in the chat. One, two, three. Lift your hand in this room. Fantastic. All over this room, you're ready to say yes to Jesus. Hold it high, unashamedly. That's it. Between you and God. Fantastic. All right, you can put your hands down. If you lifted your hand or desired to lift your hand, we're all going to say a very simple prayer together as an affirmation of the decision that you just made in your heart. Say these words, everybody together. Father God, I believe that Jesus died for me and that he rose again. So I make a choice today to surrender my heart and my life to receive salvation. I turn from my sin and I embrace your forgiveness. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Come on, can we celebrate? I'm going to ask that you would stand with me together. I want to, if you made that decision, there's a QR code that's going to be on the screen. You can also remember that little NFC chip on the back of the chair. You can just tap your phone there. Remember, you just tap it. And that'll help you and help us to come alongside and walk with you, get you connected. We have a first steps group if you want to learn how to read the Bible, if you want to know how to receive a Bible, which Bible to get. We want to help you with with all of those things. Also, if you need prayer, there's going to be prayer partners right here at the front to pray with you. Hope you enjoyed service today. Turn your palms towards heaven. I want to pray a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face towards you and be gracious to you. May he smile upon you and bring you peace, favor, rest, strength, hope, courage, and love. I pray that in your life nothing would be missing, nothing broken. That you would have everything that you need that pertains to life and to godliness. That you and your family would be protected physically, emotionally, spiritually. No weapon formed against you would prosper. And that this week, may the Spirit of God continue to help you to rise up to be all that he's called and created you to be. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. If you guys made a decision to, to trust Christ, I want to meet you right over here. Come meet me down here in front. Thank you. God bless. Well, thank you so much for being part of today's service with us. We're so honored that you chose to worship God with us today and being part of the online family. I encourage you that if uh, you are one of the ones that Pastor Byron was just speaking about, that you made a decision for Christ, uh, those of you that are online, uh, we should encourage you, obviously, to let us know because we can come alongside and really just help you in your journey. You can use the QR code. It may not have come on the screen for you or you didn't miss it. That's okay. We have the connect card, which is really what the QR code does. It takes you there. So you can click the link and that just will allow the online team and I to follow up and to kind of let you know what your next step or your possible next steps would be. And so we would love the opportunities to help you grow in your journey uh, with Jesus. So please take a moment. Let us do that. That would be amazing. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dwayne. I'm the online pastor here. If you're joining us today, maybe for the first time or you're new to the online experience, welcome. We're, we're glad that you're here. Our heart for you is to have connection, to be connected in a family dynamic. And that's, that's our desire. And so maybe you're joining us because you are moving to the area. Maybe you're joining us because you visited here and you liked. Who knows the reason? But we're here to help you connect. If you're coming and you want to find a place to get locally connected, we have eight different locations you can join. So I would love to help you do that. Or for those of you who are truly on my online audience, and maybe you're around the country today and, and you're just going to connect from there, there are opportunities for you to also get connected further than simply just watching the service. We love that you are, but you can actually get connected on a serve team and help others get connected. Maybe, maybe you would like to join a group. Maybe go through the growth track. There's so many options, and it really all begins with the Connect card. That will allow the team and I to reach out and see how we can come alongside you. Of course, when you fill out the Connect card, you're going to get an invitation from me to have digital coffee. You'll hear that term a lot. That's just a way for us to do a Zoom call 
Uh, you can click the, the link that you'll get and you can schedule it based on your availability and mine. It makes it really easy for me to create spaces in my week uh, for those to connect. And honestly, it's the highlight of my week. I love it when I get to hear stories of what God is doing in your life and, and how we as your church can come alongside you. So please, I would love that opportunity. If you have, maybe you've been here a while, but you haven't done digital coffee, I invite you to do that as well. Again, the Connect card is the way to do that. Well, thank you again for being here. I want to remind you one more thing, and that is the regional hangouts. So uh, we have found, we've been seeing that uh, we've had people connect throughout the country in person with one another. And so my desire is to maybe create more opportunities for that. And so that's what these regional hangouts are. Again, you can find them via the, uh, the Connect card. I'm scheduling them this week, so I'll start sending out emails later this week of, er of when in your area, or again, depending on how your area may be larger or smaller, depending on how many people have said, I'm interested. But you'll get information this week about that. I look forward to seeing how we can, again, further help you get connected. Well, thanks again for being here. We hope to see you again next week. God bless everybody.